Um, Ruby, I have two free bedrooms and a really cool attic, and I was thinking that my house could serve as an interim West Coast office for Creative Capital. Um, it might be very temporary, seeing as my house is about to be shaken to the ground and washed away in a wave, as you all read about in The New Yorker recently. Um, I think there's so many reasons to feel dystopic about the future, and I don't um, not suffer from that. But um, in the infinite possible realities for the future of humanity, I started to see this one smaller subset of infinite possibilities in which all the world's religions uh, failed to exclude um, people of gender and sexual diversity and affirmed and celebrated them. And I, I felt like that's so real. I mean, I saw the Star Trek episode. So my Creative Capital uh, project uh, uses singing as a form of direct action to um, create fellowship and unite people to usher each other through that little wormhole into that utopic reality. Um, I'll tell you a little more about that. First, a little about me. Um, I'm a singer and composer. I'm uh, into the ceremony and ritual of the theater of singing and composing. I bring the audience into the immediacy of performance that I think only kind of an improvisatory type of musical-like performance can really create, for me at least. And then I try to spread that across a complex interdisciplinary framework, which is a pain in the fucking ass. Um, I'm very rooted in film and emotion, and um, the first concerts I attended were Madonna's Blonde Ambition Tour and Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. So sometimes I think that my entire working life is just a form of like post-trauma from that. Um, uh, my creative capital project expands on the notion of the theater, uh, the context of theater for music and um, brings into a very different theater, which is in a word, church. Um, Requiem Mass is a choral music ceremony invoking the peaceful repose of people of gender and sexual diversities who have suffered persecution, particularly in a religious context. Um, the term working title was in the original project pitch and it stuck because it just engendered so much dialogue. Uh, should it be LGBTQ? Should it be QIAAP? Should it be queer? And we realized that um, by invoking the language of the evolution of the language of gender and sexual diversity into the sung piece, it would fulfill the, the, the educational mission of a sermon um, in, within a mass. And so we, you know, <clears throat> it's like, in the beginning, before the sexual revolution, in the beginning, there was no word, no all-encompassing non-derogatory word for non-heterosexual, and so on. So that, for example, through, through, yeah, thank you, through plain song, people are very willing to sing things they might not otherwise speak, and um, it becomes a cool to create dialogue within communities of faith that might have very mixed views on what's happening today. Now, in addition to the history of terminology, such as the word LGBT, um, well, actually, I should say, uh, LGBT has exi well, okay, so in addition to the terminology, uh, LGBT, BT has existed since about the early 80s through the present day. And so we uh, focus on the dramatic history um, that, has, that has kind of emerged around GSD issues from that time through, um, let's say, uh, Caitlyn Jenner's white Versace gown, which I think is a very present expression of what's happening commercially in the media. And of course, national gender, uh, uh, national marriage equality. Um, and uh, I really think Kennedy should have delivered his verdict in a white Versace gown. <laughs> Because then I would have forgiven him for Citizens United. Um, but true, so he sort of, he's sort of on the right side of history, isn't he? But, but oh, anyway, anyway, uh, truly on the right side of history are the partners for the project. Um, Portland Institute for Contemporary Art is my performing arts partner, and the Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in Portland is my civic partner. And with these partners, next please, we've invoked the participation of a number of local and national organizations um, through a series of symposiums, lunchtime discussions, public talks. We've been doing this since last September. Um, and these, uh, you know, gather d different people to discuss the possible utility of putting a GSD voice into the canon of Christian liturgical music. Um, the outputs of these gatherings form the blueprint from which I formed the content of the music I was writing. And then the real heart of the, the project has been, if you can advance it too, but if not, it'll just do it by itself. The real part of the heart of the project has been um, the workshops, the series of ongoing public choral workshops held both at Trinity Cathedral and at PICA's headquarters. 
and a few satellite churches in Portland to get geographic reach um, that have engaged, the, oh, these, these must have engaged over 150 people have come to the workshop since last September. There's been, I don't even know how many of them. Um, to discuss and devise the notion of the Requiem Mass and, and music as a form of liturgy, the work of the people, direct action. Um, these have a very egalitarian vibe. They're kind of somewhere between like group therapy and an acting workshop merged with a choral workshop. I have learned more and been more humbled, and as one artist said earlier, learned more about what I don't know that I don't know in, in this last year, uh, engaging people and non-professional singers uh, around a very, very touching, an issue that touches people very deeply, um, which is the effect that their experience in religious contexts have had on, on their sexual and gender identity. A core group of about 60 peoples will premiere the piece this September 11th and 12th in Portland at the TBA Festival. I hope you can come. It's going to be fun to dress this space up with like theatrical lighting and stuff like that. Um, if uh, you are a presenter who would like to replicate this in another city, I have had interesting discussions with people at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco as well as Trinity Wall, Wall Street in New York. But if you know of a civic partner you would merge with to do something like this through a long-term fellowship, it would be useful because <laughs> I hate singing. There are souls persecuted, <clears throat> but not destroyed, because it has to like come through your body. There have been souls persecuted, but not destroyed. Many lives battered down for the loves that they enjoyed. But the Lord came and met them there. Yes, she did. Yes, the Lord came and met them there. Many lives battered down for the loves that they enjoyed. But the world came and met them there. Thank you.